And here we go. So thank you all for joining us, or me. Um, Amanda was supposed to be here as well, but she had another meeting that she had to go to. Um, so for those of you who, do oops, that was a mistake. See, I'm already nervous. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Suzanne Krogan. I'm the School Library System Coordinator. Um, Amanda Zulo and I have been doing these webinars ever since uh, we were told that we had to stay at home, trying to help um, teachers, um, aides, everybody who has any questions and needs any help on anything. So we've been putting these together for a while now, and now we've got two weeks left of school. And so we thought maybe if we uh, did a presentation on bringing in some fun, uh, that might be a great way to end the year. Um, so these items are that I'm going to share with you were all curated from teachers, librarians, um, parents um, across the state that I kind of reached out to um, and asked for something that they thought would be fun. Um, I didn't get a ton of responses, so then I had to go into my own toolbox, as you would say, um, and find some things that I thought would be great to share with kids and that you might not have thought of doing before. I'm sure there's some things on this list that everybody has seen, and um, but hopefully you know, there's going to be something on here new that you'll learn. So with that, let's get started. Uh, oh, I did try, I did want to add that I did try to get things for science, for ELA, for math, for social studies, threw in a little art and music, um, and because I'm a librarian, I had to throw in a librarian section too. Um, so here we go. The first thing that I want to talk about is Skype in the classroom. Um, Skype, if you're not familiar with it, has uh, a loads of things that you can do with your kids. Um, you can Skype a scientist, you can Skype an author. Uh, you, there's recordings um, so that you don't have to, somebody just took control of my screen and I lost the presentation. <laughs> Who was that? Okay, we're just gonna start it again. OK, so back to Skype in the classroom. Um, Skype, you can request to talk to a scientist or an author, or you can watch pre-recorded um, webinars with them. Uh, there's uh, something called Mystery Skype. Um, we're going to get into that a little bit later. I have some more slides down below that have to do with um, uh, Skype in the classroom. Um, actually, we'll just go through it right now. I'm hoping you can still see my screen now that this other window has opened up. If you can't, please let me know. Like, OK, so Skype allows you to take your kids on virtual field trips. Um, mystery Skype is a lot of fun. You connect with another teacher um, in another state, in another country, and you talk, the, your students talk to each other and try and figure out where the other classroom is. I've participated in one of these, and it was a lot of fun. Thank you for letting me know that you can see it. Um, the best way to connect with people, if you're on Twitter um, and you can search for Mystery Skype and you will find lots of people who want to do it with you. Uh, and as I said, it's a lot of fun and the kids have a really great time. Um, guest speakers, there's, there's lists of professional people that you can bring in. Um, and uh, I've participated in a couple of those and there's always, always something good in there. Um, so that's Skype in the classroom. Get out of that. Um, you can see here, this is, I put up the Skype of scientists because science is our next section that we're going to. And it has, it tells you exactly how to sign up and match yourself with a scientist who would like to be in your classroom and talk to your students. Uh, the next thing I brought in was some sites and videos for science. Um, these, these are just fun. Um, there's all kinds of educational things that you could stick in with it. I'm going to play this YouTube. This is the funny animal one. I have no idea what that bird is, but he cracks me up every time I see him. 
Um, science Bob is a, a scientist, much like um, Jim, not, wait, Bob, Bill Nye, the science guy. Sorry, it's been a while since I've watched him. Um, he has lots of fun things that the kids can do. Um, something new that I discovered that a teacher from somewhere in the state sent me is iNaturalist. Um, and we're going to go to that site really quick. This is a this is a website and an app that um, kids can take pictures um, and share their observations. They can observe you know, plants, animals, whatever, and share their observations on here. And then they connect with other people and they can have discussions. Uh, this is kind of a site that you can really lose yourself in. Um, I scrolled through it and then explored it a little bit. Uh, if you hit explore, it shows you all the countries around the world that are participating in the iNaturalist site. And as you can see, it's from all over the world. And one of the neat things is on the side over here, you can see that some of the different um, things that people have contributed in recent times. And as you hover over them, it shows you where on the map that person is. Um, some of these people have been doing this for a long time and have contributed lots of items. Some of them are just starting out, but it's a great way for kids to connect with other people that are interested in science. And like I said, I spent a large amount of time. Oh, did the iNaturalist site not come up? Oh, shoot. Well, that's too bad because I don't know why. I don't know why it's not doing that. Let me try again. Any better now? You see. As in the Science Bob website? Somebody, you can go ahead and unmute and tell me what you're seeing because I'm, I'm seeing one thing and you guys are seeing another. We're seeing sites uh, and videos for science. It's just but, the, I believe, the slide that you were uh, showing us. Okay, so it's not. Oh, that's odd. Can't see um, the no. Hmm. Well, I could try and figure that out, but then we're going to sit here for a long time. Um, I'm going to go on to the next slide and see if there's something in my presentation. I don't, I don't know why it's doing that because um, it was working fine when I did it earlier. And um, yeah, thank you. I am worried though. <laughs> uh, anyway, if we can't, if I can't share this with you, please go to the iNaturalist site um, because it, it's it's amazing and it's so fun for the kids. It was fun for me anyway. I'm going to assume that that's probably going to happen with each one of these, that it's not going to open up, but I will try to do it and see what happens. Um, so these are podcasts. Uh, I thought podcasts would be something uh, different for kids to have to listen to um, or, or do. They're, they're all kid oriented. They go from kindergarten up to you know college age. One of the, my favorites that I found was Short and Curly. It's a family podcast. It has a classroom guide. Um, it's uh, it starts with a big question and then they pause and you can talk with your family about the question and then you start again and they discuss um, the big question. Um, one of the big questions that they had. I can't remember now. Um, let me see if it'll work for you. And go ahead and unmute and tell me if you can see the short and curly page. No, no cannot. I am so sorry. I don't know why it's not working. I'm trying to figure it out, but. I'm going to try something else really quick. 
I'm going to stop sharing this screen and try sharing a different one straight from the PowerPoint. Sounds good. OK. What do you see now? I can see that you're back to uh, the original PowerPoint with all your tabs at the top. OK. We'll just ignore my tabs and we're going to try and present this. <laughs> <laughs> When you share your screen, if you choose the desktop option, it should change every time you change screens. Does that make sense? No, but that's OK. <laughs> OK, <laughs> we're just going to go from here, I think. See if it works from here. OK, now I'm going to try the iNaturalist again because I really want you to see this. How about now? It's working. There it okay. goes. OK, I good. So it. now. You Good. We're just going to go from here. I was trying to be clever and do it through teams and it just we're just not going to do that. All right. So now let me go and show you again what I was talking about. So here's the map of all the people that have contributed to the iNaturalist site. So you can see it's worldwide. Um, if you hover over the section on the right hand side, it then shows you where in the world that that person came from. I mean, it also tells you that it's from Baja, California in their list, but it shows you on the map. Um, you can see there's been almost 40 million observations are listed in here and there's there's animals, there's bugs, there's plants, there's you name it, it's on here. And I, I really think kids would enjoy this and they can kind of get just get lost in it and explore different things. Um, so I think that'll be fun for them. All right, let's go back here. Um, insect identification is a is an app and it also works um, straight on your laptop. Um, and it's exactly what it says it is. Kids can take a picture of an insect and then, or they can look at an insect, bring up where they are and type in the different attributes of the insect or they choose from pictures and uh, then it will suggest what it might be which is fun as well. Um, Science Bob, now that we're here, we can. Curse, that's not going to go either. Why would it work for me? Now nothing's working. <laughs> OK, now we're back to the science and math podcasts. Let's go down to short and curly. So this is this is fun. It's fast paced. It's um, you know, it grabs the kids attention right at the beginning. If you look at the episodes, it kind of covers all kinds of different things. They call it an ethics podcast. Um, the podcast that I listened to, I started to listen to is why is your room so messy? Um, as the mother of a 15 year old boy, I was really curious as to why his room was so messy. Um, and they, they talk about if 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 it's just an innate quality or if that's something they can change and the parents and the kids discuss it together and it, it's a lot of fun. Um, another fun one is Brains On. This is also one that's for kids and families. It has um, these little videos of all different kinds of things. Right now, um, they're very focused on the coronavirus um, for obvious reasons. Um, but they're also a lot of fun, uh, like unicorns of the sea, all kinds of things that kids just really enjoy. Um, so this one is based is, is scientific and history. Um, the two, uh, the three, actually there's math mutation, breaking math and math dudes. All three of them say like in their first line, um, making math fun and accessible. Um, I did not do a lot of exploration of those because math is never fun to me. There's not anything fun about that. But for some people it is, and maybe it will help kids enjoy it. Um, Star Talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson is uh, a great one. He, um, it's very accessible, uh, understandable for kids, um, probably more towards high school. Um, I was lucky enough I got to see him speak a few years ago and 
I know nothing about science, um, and he just made it so interesting. It wasn't anything I ever thought I would want to listen to, and I sat there for three hours and was, I could have sat there for three more. Um, so he's fun for the kids as well. And then there's a couple of other ones in here. NASA's Curious Universe, that's a great one as well, especially now with the space launch that we just had. Um, Something that was shared with me were science themed writing prompts. Um, this is a Google Doc. And I'm sharing these because even though it's science based writing prompts, I think you could take these and adapt them to any other um, subject that you wanted to. Um, it would be great for social studies. You know, just you just change this, the question, but they can still do these kinds of writing prompts that they have. Um, so it's a great way to bring in ELA into any of your other subjects. Um, and these are all these are all linked in the PowerPoint and the PowerPoint, as I said, will be put up on the website. And I put that link in the chat. Social studies websites and videos. Um, I only have a few on here because each one of them is really full of stuff. Um, my favorite one on here would be Crash Course World History. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that, but it's by, I'm going to just open it up for you. It's by Hank and John Green. Um, John Green is a name that may be familiar to a lot of people. Um, we're going to stop that for just a second. Um, John Green is a, a young adult author. He wrote The Fault in Our Stars, which was hugely popular five years ago. Um, and he's written many, many other books, but he and his brother Hank do this Crash Course History Channel and they're quick, they're fun, uh, they're very informative. I, They've been doing this for years and years and I, I know I watched one with my kids many years ago on um, daylight savings time and why we have it and how different parts of the country do it differently and it, it it stuck with me, so it must be good because I have so much information in my head that, you know, anything that sticks in there is good. Um, but you can see they have all different kinds of things that they talk about, not just um, social studies, but they also have a few science ones as well. Um, and they're funny um, and very engaging. Um, so, you know, kids could watch those and then use those writing prompts that I just shared. The Library of Congress, if you've never been to their website, has loads of stuff for kids. Just, just exploring it would be fun for them. Um, they have, well, they show you right here what's trending right now. Not surprising what the topics are. This is what people are looking up. But they have um, exhibits that you can go and see and their current exhibit I'm sharing this because it's one that I think would be interesting to kids. Where did it go? Um, comic art. So it's the history of comics. And the kids can go in and they can see all the different comics from you know, the early, late 1800s all the way through today. Um, the big difference, they can study the art, they can study the writing, they can just read them you know, see what the different things are. Um, as you can see, there's some of the ones that came from that time period. Um, the Library of Congress also has photo exhibits that you can, um, that the kids can explore. They have specific ones for specific times of the year. Um, they, they always change. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a fun place to explore. And maybe it's just because I'm a librarian, but there's a lot of stuff here um, that kids could just look at and talk about. Um, New York State Historic Newspapers. Now I added this one. This is a local source. Um, and I added this because this is another one where you start and you can you go down a rabbit hole and you just you can spend hours on this and not even realize that it's happened. Um, it's newspapers from all across the state that have been scanned and archived, um, and they go all the way back. 
I know we've got one here from 1811, but I believe in one of the other counties, it goes back even to the 1700s. Now, one of the fun things kids can do on this is they can type in, you know, their town. If their, you know, if their family has lived here forever, they can put in their their own name, and they will find other people with the same name, or they can find relatives. I once was on here, curiously searching my own name, seeing if I ever came up in the newspapers, and I ended up finding my great great grandfather's obituary from the uh, who was wounded in the Civil War. So this is something that. You know, kids can really explore the area that we live and learn its history, but not in a like you have to do this way. It's more like their own way, you know, pick their own topic, look through all these newspapers and see what they can find. Um, I, I have spent a lot of time on here and it is it's fun. The big history project I don't know a lot about. I know that it's a project, a work in progress that um, they're studying. They look at times and points in history and how that has affected our present and then they make assumptions or predictions is a better word as to what the future might hold due to these things that have happened. Um, that's probably for older high school students. Um, crash course, I would definitely use in elementary and high school. They cover everything and they're, like I said, they're fun. That would definitely be my favorite one. And more podcasts. Um, I'm a big fan of podcasts. You'll see that as we go through here. Um, and I'm also a fan of social studies because you can see there's a lot of podcasts on here. Um, I've checked out each one of these. Um, I'm looking at my notes, so make sure I get it. Um, history Chicks, we'll start with that one. That is, I'm not going to click on all these, but we'll, we can talk about them. History Chicks is exactly what it sounds like. It's two women talking about historical women. Um, they're pretty long podcasts. Most of them are an hour and an hour and a half, and they're not geared towards the younger set. These are more towards the high school kids. I've listened to quite a few of these and they're super informative and um, it's conversational. So it's not like you're sitting in a history class. It's, um, I think kids kids would like this. Um, and I know some students who have listened to them before and they do really like them. Um, stuff you missed in history class is exactly what it sounds like. Um, this is also a very popular one. Um, talking about some obscure historical facts and things that have happened. Um, backstory is, um, it, it takes current events and things that are happening right now and looks at them through a different lens, um, gives you a different pers perspective. And so students end up with two perspectives of a topic um, which would be a great conversation starter, a great writing prompt. Um, um, more perfect. This is one that I had not heard of before. It's all about the Supreme Court. Um, so again, that's high school level. Um, code switch is very relevant right now. I'm going to click on that one. This is from NPR. It's um, exact fearless conversations about race relations. Um, so, as I said, that's very, very prominent, tip, topical right now. Um, these looks like they come out every few days. Um, and again, great writing prompt. Um, revisionist history is similar to backstory. Um, it looks at things that happened and then digs in a little bit deeper to see if there were things that were missed in investigations or in um, writings about particular topics. Fresh Air is from NPR. I think most everybody knows what that is. Um, this Day in History class is um, exactly what it sounds like. It takes today and finds something that happened in history. Lots of times it's some it's kind of an obscure thing. So for today, and maybe it's just because I don't know much about blues music, but Memphis Minnie was born today. I don't even know who that is, but 
it has a six minute podcast on so they can learn about it. Um, this this one was interesting. The Heimlich maneuver was in 1974. I given away my age, but I remember when that came when that happened and we had to learn about it in school. <laughs> um, so there, there's just a lot of neat things on here and they're quick, um, which is nice. Freakonomics is a fun one. Let me just find my note here. Um, I, I like how they say it's it's uh, it tells you things that you always thought you knew but you didn't know, and things you never thought you wanted to know but you do. So I I really like this one on the top. How to make meetings less terrible. <laughs> um, they, they're, it covers all kinds of topics, um, but all related to social studies and history. Um, I think I covered all of those there. Um, so here's some videos for reading and the arts. Um, this most of these are geared. Well, all of them are really geared towards the younger elementary set. Um, the art with Maddie and Dada, even though it's a very, very childish videos. Um, they talk about um, famous artists like Van Gogh, Leonardo, and they're short and they're quick and there's no reason a high school student can't watch these. Um, I know my high school student watches goofy things all the time. Another thing that I liked though is when you get to this home page of the Matt and Dada or whatever their names are. Um, it then leads you into other ones, biographies of artists and how to draw sections. Um, so that's a really neat one too. Uh, I especially liked Land of Tales. This one can actually be used for um middle schoolers as well because this is online books and stories um, fairy tales funny tales heartwarming tales and then they have some novels um, that the kids can listen to this happens to be my all-time favorite book so i was very excited that that was here um, just something uh, a different way for kids to read um, I added, I, I needed a music site, so um, Disney has a Disney sing-along site, um, little snippets of all their favorite, favorite famous songs um, that with the words so that kids can sing along and learn them. Um, it's another fun thing that they can do. They could record themselves and send it to their teachers if they're brave, um, or they can just sing along at home. Uh, this is a neat one, Elementary. It teaches kids how to um, code a story. Um, it's a, yeah, an interactive story. Here's where it tells you. You do need to have an account and then you can create a classroom for your students. Um, but it's free. And the stories that they end up with are very cute. Um, I can't do it from here, but if the students are logged into their account, the story is interactive. So you can click on Little Red Riding Hood and something happens. You can click on the wolf and he talks and different things like that. Um, and these are all created by kids. Um, and here we have some podcasts for ELA. Um, Again, ELA is kind of my thing, being a librarian, so I had to cut down. I had so many of these, and I just picked some of my favorites. Um, if any of you remember Rocky and Bullwinkle, um, if any of you are old like me, this podcast, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd, is done like Rocky and Bullwinkle. It's like a newscast, um, news flash. They're super short. Um, Dr. Floyd goes into the all different kinds of places into the past. Right here you see he's um, with Benjamin Franklin because Benjamin Franklin is having trouble inventing bifocals. Um, 
and there's seven, eight, eight seasons of this one. Um, and it, it it's funny and it's fun and it's educational. So can't beat that. Um, which one else should we go through? Uh, this one's kind of fun for the little ones. Um, it's audio stories. Another place where kids can write original stories and submit them. Um, here are some kids stories that kids have written. Um, and it is it is a podcast, so it's just it's just the audio on these. This one is new and I had to add it. Um, it's Julie's library. It's Julie Andrews and her daughter are reading stories um, and they they have little discussions as well. Um, I love Julie Andrews, so I had to put that one in there. Uh, but why from Vermont Public Radio is exactly what it sounds like. It's for every little kid that constantly says why, why, why. Um, and uh, has answers to all kinds of questions and they're very short and sweet and cute. Um, grammar Girl is great for high schoolers. She talks about all different kinds of grammar rules and um, you know what things that are, can be confusing. Um, she writes about job applications, uh, different sayings that we have. Uh, this is a really, really good one for the upper upper level kids. Um, yeah, I think we're going to circle round was a good one as well. This is also from NPR. Um, it takes folk tales and makes them, uh, adds music to them, and they're each about 10 to 20 minutes, um, which is, and it's good, that's good for the younger group again. Most of these podcasts are also, you can use the podcasting podcast app on uh, your phone, um, but they can also be listened to online. Okay, now on to a few different items. Um, PBS Learning Media, I, did, I think most people are aware of this, but I wanted to share it again just in case because they have stuff for everybody. Um, they have videos, they have documentation, they have games for the little kids, um, and it, it covers every topic, math, science, social studies, um, music. Here's one for phys ed. Um, little, short little videos, um, and if you explore it, you, you can explore it by grade level, by subject, by your by standards, um, and kids can come in here and find stuff as well. Um, so I highly recommend this site. Um, I'm hoping that a lot of the things I share are things that you can look at. And if you can't use them now, when school starts again, you might be you might, you might think, oh, that might be work. Um, Breakout EDU. This is um, kind of like an escape room online. Um, they have these are some these are free. There's a paid version of Breakout EDU. These that I'm showing you today are free. Um, they have them divided up by grade level. They're, they do have, and I highly suggest if you're going to use this, um, an example video of how to do them, because I'll be honest, I clicked on the first one and I couldn't figure out the answer. Um, but then when they showed me how to do it, then it was so much easier to figure out. But they have, um, they're very short and they're very quick. Um, let me show, I'll just open one up so you can see how they work. It's a puzzle, basically. Now, if it wasn't online, you'd actually have a box with locks, inside a box with a lock. Um, there's various locks, there's colors, there's numbers, and there's letters. Um, so this is the one that I had a hard time with. So you're going to have to use colors. So it says Lucy's packing for her trip. She only needs to pack for the season. She will be traveling in. And this says it's for first grade. I, can you figure out what season she's in? And the clues are all in right here. It 
So the season is fall because there's a capital F, a capital A, and then these two capital L's. And then you have to choose the shirts that go along with it, the colors of the shirts, and put them in the correct order and unlock the box. And I will tell you, it took me 10 minutes to figure that out. Um, but once it's figured out, they get a little hooray, you did it. Um, and if there's any of these that you have questions about later on and you want to learn more about, um, I'm really just giving you a quick overview. My email is going to be at the end and uh, please feel free to email me. Um, I don't get so nervous in email, so it's going to sound much better when I talk about it there. Um, oh, virtual field trips. These are a lot of fun. Um, I only pulled out a few different places that have links to virtual field trips, but if you Googled virtual field trip, you will find thousands of things. Um, I chose this one because it's from Common Sense Educators, Common Sense Media. They're all vetted and okay for children. Um, so these are their top virtual field trip sites. Um, some of them you need a phone, some of them you need apps. These will probably work better for people in the fall. Uh, the Asian Art Museum, that one you can use right now. Anything that has like the VR and the AR. Um, and if you decide that's something you want to use, please contact me because we have an entire VR kit that the kids can use, especially with the expeditions. Uh, we talked about Skype right at the beginning where you can take a virtual field trip. Uh, again, that's where you can connect with other people around the world or they can watch pre-recorded ones. We Are Teachers has an entire list of virtual field trips. Um, so that you would just choose what you want. They go, um, again, elementary to high school level. Um, Adventures in Familyhood is a cute one. It has uh, trips to Disney World, trips to Universal Studios, um, different things like that, just kid fun type things. And then uh, because I didn't have an icon down here is a link to 30 virtual field trips that somebody curated at the beginning of all this. Um, and it's a great document. It talks about, it gives you a little description and the link is in it. Oop. Where did it? Sorry about that. There we go. So there uh, again, there's all kinds. Um, I actually say I have some of these actually linked on another page as well. Uh, museums are another type of virtual field trip. Um, these are just a few again that kids can go to. Uh, if you Googled virtual field trips to museums, you would come back with way more than I have here. Um, this one I thought was, this is the National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC. A lot of these are done through the Google Arts and Culture site. So if you just went to artsandculture.google.com, you'll probably find more than I am showing you. Um, so here are some of their online exhibits that they have. Different things that you can look at. And each one of these uh, link museums has links to various um, rooms in their museum that the kids can look at. So now that we've come to this point where I've shown you all these different things and there's probably um, a lot more than you wanted to know about, um, how do you present that to the kids? How do you give them options? Um, Google choice boards are a great way to do that. A Google choice board is basically an interactive Google slide. Um, so what I've done here is this is actually a Google choice board right down here that you can see that somebody created. Um, I have some bigger ones that I'll show you afterwards. This video right here is a two and a half minute long video of how to do this. And it's it's 
pretty quick and it's pretty easy. I've done them myself. Um, if you decide that you want to do it and you need help, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, Hello teacher lady, that's this person right over here. She has a great site, a blog actually, about how to use digital choice boards and how to make them. Um, she's got templates that she shares and here's her video again. I just pulled it out so that it was there. Um, and she's got a lot of information there and she's really easy to follow. Um, here's some a link of um, 30 interactive Google slides that you can look at and use and have the kids use. Um, they again, they go through science, social studies, anything that you can you can think about. Um, I kind of like the name of the site, Ditch the Textbook. Um, OK, so now here's an example of a Google choice board for art and each one of these are linked to an activity and basically you just give the kids a choice. They have to do two of them or three of them or four of them or you can even make it into tic tac toe. They have to do three in a row or whatever you want to do. Um, but the point of it is that you give the kids a choice as to what they learn and how they learn it. And here's another one for vocabulary. Um, and again, it's just giving them a choice of what they want to do. And my last slide, this is not exactly a Google choice board, but this is something that I promote every single year, uh, the book Bingo. Um, this is great for students because if you ever looked at an adult book Bingo, every single one of these squares is a type of book you have to read. But for this one, the kids can read in different places. They can read in bed, they can read outdoors, they can uh, listen to a book, they can uh, read with their pet. Um, this is also kind of like a choice board, but it's not interactive. Um, but it's a fun thing to do. Kids can make do, you know, bingo or whatever, just, just to get them to read and to do different things. So I think that was probably pretty fast. Um, um, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I'm very good at answering email. Um, and like I said, I don't get so nervous answering email, so I'll be more clear in those things. Um, the, the video, the recording of this and the PowerPoint will be on our website. And, uh, and that's it. Oh, Amanda, you're here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop recording now. Oh, Amanda just put the link in too, and it's also at the top of the chat box.